Who do you think the Leafs want in the opening round? I guess there's two different conversations. Like, who do you want the Leafs to play? Mm -hmm. But who do you think they, they want in this opening round? Because obviously the top of the Atlantic division is absolutely stacked. Yeah. And right now, if the playoffs started at this moment that we're recording this podcast, the Leafs would have home ice in the first round against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Mm. But is that the team you want them to play in the first round, Lapore? It's not. The Tampa Bay Lightning are not a team I want to touch in the first round. I'll break it down this way. And I really do mean this. Whether it is Florida or Boston or Tampa Bay, whoever, however the, the cards fell, whoever Toronto played in the first round, I would feel good about it. Whoever they played, I'd probably put the Leafs as a slight favorite, whoever they played. Call me Homer all you want. But I circle Boston as a team that, again, there's the demons of the past, but if the Leafs can somehow get that out of their brain, I just look at the two lineups and I look at the two seasons that I look at the seasons Marner and Matthews are having and the team, the team as a whole, the, the type of season they're having. I can't see, I said, I can't see it. Of course it can happen, but I wouldn't bet on Boston beating Toronto four out of seven, this Boston lineup versus this Leafs lineup. Now that's not to say it's an impossibility. Boston's a very, very good team and fully capable of beating the Leafs. But when I look at the Tampa Bay Lightning, to me, there's just too many X factors that can flip the series on its head. Right off the bat, Vasilevsky. Second, this team is the two-time defending Stanley Cup champion. We know they have the pedigree and we know they're battle-tested. So you get up in a series 3-2 or even 3-1, to one, you're not going to count the Tampa Bay Lightning out. They can reel off three wins in a row. They've been there before and they've done it. Florida, I don't want to see like a track meet of a series because that, that's exactly what it'll be. It'll be fun as hell for the neutral fan, but I just don't want to see that type of series. Now, like, now let me step back a second and tell everyone, like, I think these are three elite teams and I think these are three teams that can win the Stanley Cup. But I think if I just had to pick one, I think I would pick Boston. I'd say bring on the Bruins. And there's also the, maybe the seed in me that just wants to see the Leafs beat the Bruins. And I don't know. I'll ask you this too. Is there a team that it's kind of a cheesy, a cheesy line, but is there a team? Uh, is there a team that you think will give the Leafs more momentum if they beat the compared to like beating the Bruins going forward in the playoffs? Like, I think that'd be such a huge thing. For, that would be massive. Laporte. Yeah. Get that monkey off their back of finally beating the Bruins in the playoffs. The last three times we all know how it ended in game seven. And I agree with you. I think the Bruins are the best first round matchup for the Leafs. I really do. Mm -hmm. I want nothing to do with Tampa. You mentioned everything. I don't have to go over it again. And another one other thing about Tampa is John Cooper. He's a yes. coach that I trust that is just always going to make the right decisions, whether it's in-game decisions, game-to-game -game decisions with the lineup and making adjustments. That I, I want nothing to do with John Cooper. He's a top three coach in the league. He's phenomenal. And don't be fooled by, you know, where Tampa is in the standings right now. And maybe they've been struggling a little bit recently. They when don't the playoff care. start. Yeah. The back-to-back -back champs, that's a team that knows how to win and they're going to lock in. Want nothing to do with them. And you mentioned Florida. I think Florida and the Leafs are very similar teams. I know Florida is eight points ahead of the Leafs in the standings right now. I believe it's eight points. I should double check yeah, that. Yeah, it sounds right. Yeah, Eight points ahead in the standings, but they are so similar. Right now, the two highest scoring teams in the league in goals per game, Florida's number one, the Leafs are number two. Yep. And you look at goals against, they're literally in the same spot as well. The, yeah. the only difference is that the Leafs have, their goaltending has been pretty bad this year. I was looking at the goaltending stats before we came on. Right now on the season, the Leafs sit 30th in the NHL in five-on-five -five save percentage. Only the Kraken and New Jersey Devils have been worse. And then in terms of overall save percentage in all situations, the Leafs sit 23rd in the NHL. That's since the beginning of the season? Yeah, that's since the beginning of the season. So this Leaf team, I didn't know we were Lepore, 30th. I did not know we were 30th. This Leaf team is on pace for a 114-point season. 
And that would put them second in the Atlantic division. Oh my putting God. up a, a franchise record, 114 points. And that is despite sitting 30th in the NHL in five on five save percentage process that for a second. It's impossible. Yeah. It's just absolutely insane. Can you imagine this team was getting average goaltending at five on five this season? Yeah. It's just, it's just wild to think about. So yeah, I want the Bruins in the first round. I just, I just look at the Bruins roster from top to bottom. It's just not very good. Like obviously that, you know, wow, not very good. I no, know. I, I'm just, I, I will say this. Listen, yeah, I don't want to say they're trash or anything. That would be outrageous. Obviously, they have Bergeron and Marshawn anchoring that first line. David Pasternak, who's currently out right now, he has been moved down the lineup onto that second line with Taylor Hall. But I just look at their centers, Lapore. Okay, so Bergeron is obviously fantastic. But then you have Eric Halla, Charlie yeah. Coyle, and Thomas Nosek. Those are really the four centers you're throwing at teams in the playoffs. Like losing David Krejci, I think is huge. And I think come playoff time, that is going to be something that you can exploit with this Bruins team. Just their depth down the middle at center. I should say their lack of depth. Their defense core has improved, obviously, with Hampus Lindholm coming over at the trade deadline. Jeremy Swayman's having a great year at net. Swayman, yeah. It's just a team that depth-wise, Lapore, I don't think they stack up well with the Leafs. Again, I, I'm, I'm scared that the, Bru- the Bruins are a really good defensive team. But just when I look up and down the roster, I just don't think they have the firepower to compete with the Leafs. And you've seen it earlier this year. The, the Leafs beat the Bruins 6-4 March 29th. They beat the Bruins 5-2 back in November. And even that 6-4 game, remember, they got out to like, I didn't believe it was like a 6-1 lead. Yeah, and they were down to like four defensemen by the end or something. But yeah. Yeah, so so that's the team I'm circling. And even you, you made that great point about the momentum. If they can somehow get over the hump against Boston, this team's going to be riding real high, man. I saw a stat about Boston, too, and I wish I remember the exact numbers, but their record against good teams is terrible. Like, I think I saw something in the Eastern Conference against X teams. They're like five and 14 or something. So they're just, I mean, that means they're kicking the shit out of everyone in the lower half. So make of that what you wish, but it's just something to look at. Um, It's tough, man. Like, because again, these, these are all good teams. So to pick one and to really and truly say like, I want them. I mean, uh, be, be my guest, but I just want to be quick here and say that maybe I'm not even criticizing the Bruins when I, <laughs> when I'm picking them, I'm more just giving so much respect to Tampa and Florida. And you mentioned the Krejci thing. It's funny. So as a Lee fan, or it, with regard to this topic, just a fan of a team, not named the Boston Bruins. I was kind of afraid of the Leafs losing Krejci because of what he was being paid and his production didn't match what he was being paid. He had that huge contract, but Bruins fans were telling me, no, 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 we're fucked when we lose Krejci. Like, I remember a couple of my buddies are are, uh, big Bruins fans, and they were saying, no, it's going to be a hard hit when we lose him, regardless of what we're paying him. And we'll see. I mean, they've had a really good season, but we'll see if that comes to play in the playoffs, and it really does affect them in a negative way. It makes them weaker down, like that much weaker down the middle and puts them in a a poor situation as far as matchups go. Yeah, because when you're getting down to a seven-game series and you're preparing every single night, you're locking in on all the individual matchups and the coaches are really, really diving into the X's and O's and making adjustments, not having David Krejci as your number two center, I think is really going to hurt. And again, I, I mentioned the list of centers the Bruins have. It just doesn't stack up with the Leafs. And who knows? You know, Boston has actually seen some success moving Pasternak off that top line and kind of spreading out their offense. But in the two games against the Leafs this season, the Leafs have just flat out looked like the better team. Now, you could say we're idiots because we were jumping for joy when the Leafs played the Habs last year in the first round, and we thought it was a cakewalk of a matchup. And, I mean, I think everyone thought that across the NHL. And then, obviously, that ended poorly not to make any excuses, John Tavares played three minutes in the series. Maybe that would have changed things. But again, it's like you said, Lapore. they're all good teams. But if we're really going to be nitpicking here, the Bruins seem like the weakest team, obviously, of the four when it comes to the Atlantic division right now. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, I, I, and I don't think I don't think that's a hot take, and I don't think. Well, I was gonna say I don't think Bruins fans would get would get too offended by that, but oh yeah, they're fucking. They're, they'll they'll be offended. I promise. <laughs> yeah, the, the comments are already hitting. Wait for the playoffs. Wait for the playoffs. Wait yeah, for the. They'll playoffs. they'll be they'll find a way to be extremely offended by that. I I promise yeah. you. 